All right, guys. Just have the truck today. Got my mud boots on. It rained all night. Um, not a lot of rain, but it rained enough where it's, it's got a little bit of mud back in here. I'm at one of my customer's uh, jobs here. And down this hill, as you'll see in just a minute here, when we walk down is a John Deere track skid steer. I believe it's a 329D, I'm not positive. Um, but it's having electrical issues. It won't, um, it won't move throwing some codes it'll start up but it won't move so my customer called me and he was in a panic okay says that uh, when he um, takes the parking brake off and then goes to move it flashes a code at him and uh, won't move so I'll see first off of course always the first thing to do is verify verify the complaint here so I'll start it up let it just warm up for just a sec and I'll give it a shot so the only code I'm saying is seeing is that one right there that 920.05 EMU um, I don't know what module that is um, uh, EMU uh, yeah I'm not sure what the acronym is there everybody uses their own crap but let's take this release the park ring okay so it's saying left joystick not in center about this joystick saying it's not in center so it's the computer is reading uh, XY axis on these joysticks and for some reason it's it's reading that it's not in the center or neutral position now, of course I don't have whatever John Deere calls their software or service advisor or whatever I don't have that so that could be a problem Looks like we got some wires. A lot of uh, dirt in here, but I don't I don't know if there's moisture getting in anything. It looks like we got some wires coming out of here, going back. So probably the best I can do. For now is uh, check uh, some connections check the wires 
make sure everything looks good and uh, and go from there so yeah so that's the that's the error code the left joystick not in in center well that's the message anyway for it I don't know what the actual code is so that guessing it that's the hydraulic control unit the HCU so that's probably the one that's fussing about the joystick I'm guessing is this one this uh, 221309 I'm guessing that's the hydraulic control unit so in order to get the cover off the joystick to look at the connectors you have to tilt the cab so you got to take that bolt and that bolt off and then you have to lift it up if you're going to work underneath there make sure it's locked on the lock um but anyways yeah john deere made it where that plastic connector or plastic cover for here there's two um, bolts that you have to remove here I was like I took the screws off here and I was like why isn't this stupid thing coming off but of course they had to make it where you have to tilt the cab to take the cover off but um so instantly now I got that cover off and I look at the connectors check the wires well instantly what I see is I don't know if it's gonna sh how good it's gonna show up on the camera there but you guys can see this is a twisted pair here this is uh it looks like there's three three wires going in here but um obviously some kind of communication line um to the computer so i believe let's see yeah, it's going to the joystick for sure. So you can see that yellow wire there. I take the tape off of it. This wire, that looks like it just was heat shrinked. Um, so. I'm wondering if it was somewhere tucked in here because this cover is all plastic that goes over here but I doubt it would have worn through like that on the plastic so I'm guessing I don't know when I took the cover off all these wires kind of spilled out of there but I'm wondering if you know this was touching against um this metal here anywhere the joystick here or the joystick uh, support here if any of that um if this wire was touching any of that stuff that could definitely cause an issue so i'm think the next step i'm gonna drop the cab and then i'm gonna with this pulled off make sure this is pulled and not touching anything i really need to separate these wires better too and make sure the green one is not the insulation's not it doesn't look like it but make sure that's okay um uh, but i'm gonna pull this away from there and get in the cab and see if i can get the machine to work now and uh because i don't think the wires actually um, you know, the wire is not like broke in the way through internally. There might still be continuity, a circuit there. So, bring it down and see what happens. But uh, either way, that wire needs to be fixed. Um, so I'll have to, uh, you know, solder it back together, or do whatever I need to do, fix that, and then. Uh, but hopefully that's that's the issue. So, anyways, enough blabbing. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this thing lowered down and, and give it a shot. 
Well, I uh, put the cab down, tried to start it. Uh, same faults coming up. So a uh, few different possibilities here. Either I'm just saw that, got it excited, and has nothing to do with the issue I'm having here. Um, another possibility is that wire is in worse shape than um, I expected. So I'm gonna go get a meter and see if we're getting a, I'll check if I'm getting a voltage to there and on the other side of that bad spot, make sure that getting power and everything where I should. And uh, and then the I guess maybe another possibility is that the code just needs to be re um, cleared. Sometimes um, on certain codes, I've noticed they stay on unless you uh, clear them out. So just checking voltage at these um, communication lines and I got about 2.5 on that one on the that's the green and then on the yellow Right around 2.5 on that one. Um, so, what to do next? So, I mean, there's, there's obviously, um, voltage coming in and I measured it on both sides of that bad spot on the wire. Doesn't seem to change. Um, I'm going to fix that wire anyways. Um, just, I mean, those communication lines are really picky. And uh, it needs to be fixed anyways. So, and they're really picky just in case there is some, something going on, a little bit of more resistance or something in that. And then I'm, I had my scope hooked up on um, to it, my oscilloscope. And I checked, checked these lines with the oscilloscope and I don't know. It looks like it's, uh, the, um, HCU is, uh, sending, I mean, it's sending and receiving little data packets. Um, I didn't see, like, anything crazy. Um, but I don't have, like, a known good to, uh, check it against. Um, I don't know what's, what it's supposed to look like. Um, it's definitely trying to send... Um, information for sure. I also checked my ground and that was good and my power my power and ground to the controller that's also good. The power wire this um, red wire here is getting um, battery voltage to it and the ground's checking out um, but at this point, I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards this joystick's getting everything it needs as far as power, ground, and uh, um, signal coming in and out of it. So, I don't know, I'm starting to lean towards that this just might be a um, bad joystick. Um, but I'm not sure how much these guys are. They're probably not cheap. Anything from John Deere is not cheap. So, 
really would hate to make make a call and be wrong. Um, man, I really thought I had something when I when I found that wire. Um, and I don't know, that may or may not have had anything to do with all the problems we're having. Um, but, like I said, I'm looks like I'll probably fix the wire and uh, I got, I hate working on skid steers. There's, I got my laptop because I had my scope and uh, I had my, all my wires and leads that I need. And uh, there's the cover for the joystick down there and like there is no room and then it wants you to cycle the the lap bar all the time. So uh, there's just like no room to set anything in here. Kind of getting, feeling claustrophobic in here. But um, anyway, so yeah, I think the next step is I'm going to tilt the, oh, I'm going to fix that wire. I'm also going to tilt the cab back up. And I want to check the connectors back at the HCU um, and uh, make sure I'm, they look good. Everything looks good there, but I think they're going to because I'm. it seems like I'm getting everything I need to the joystick. So if there was a problem back there, I'd be missing, you'd think I'd be missing something up here. So I'm not, not real hopeful at that, but I figure I might as well put eyes on it anyways. That should do. able to remember how to get into the service menu on here so it's got some information like diagnostics HCU power so if we select on it we've got voltage read in battery voltage VP1 VP2 whatever that is VP3 5 volt reference sensor supply 5 volts
go to left joystick and select on it, you can see there's no no information there. So if I move as I move the joystick around, nothing. Now if I go back and I go to right joystick and select. That was helpful, but not helpful. I mean, uh, I cleared the codes and it's still coming right back. Um, at this point, I'm ready to call the joystick. I think the EMU and the, you know, the hydraulic control unit are communicating. Or I wouldn't even be able to read data off of them. If it was like a no com or something, um, I wouldn't be able to get in there and read data. And I think I'd have some extra codes in here as far as communication codes, I would think. Um, so. I think I'm about ready to call this this joystick. Um, so when I heard that this thing was three thousand dollars, I um, was like, "Well, I'm like 99." I think I told you guys in the last video, I'm like 99% sure it's the joystick. But I had to come back here anyways because um, I had um, I have to go work on that Cabelco excavator and. Uh, reseal the drive or the swing motor i'm sorry the swing motor so i'm like well i'm gonna walk down the hill or drive down the hill and it's not muddy this time and uh and give it one more look um so what i got here in my lap is i got both these joysticks removed and so i'm trying to figure out the logic of these things um of course everything's computerized and trying to figure out what you know what the computer how it determines which is the right and left joystick um, because I want to swap joysticks from side to side and see if um, first of all I think with that test I'm going to test wiring integrity and see if the code moves from left to right so a um, couple of things I'm going to be doing with that and uh, so I got these removed um, this is the, the right hand joystick and uh, we'll be first before I do that let me show you I think I showed you on the last video but... I'm going to go into the service menu and then I'm going to go to diagnostics 
and then I'm gonna go to joystick and uh, let's select home left joystick and you can see by these lines here that it's a no com what I mean by that there's no communication um, well that makes sense right now because I have everything unplugged but that's the same thing we had when we had it plugged in so let me plug the right hand joystick if I can do this with one arm into the left hand side and see if that changes so nothing changed there and I'm not too worried about not too worried about this connection I'm just looking for the communication the twisted wire these can circuits and then I'm gonna take the left hand joystick well you know before we do that let's go back let's go to right joystick and select so it's shown we have communication, those are at zero. So you can see I'm plugged into the left hand side. This one is not even plugged in. And our right hand is now reading on our, is reading good. Everything's working fine, but I have it hooked into the left hand wire inside. So that's a quick way to tell me real quick that this wiring, because I was worried about, you remember I fixed this wire right here. It had a bare spot in it and uh, I was worried about this wiring and going back to the module. So that just goes to show me that this wire integrity, that's a quick check because that shows me that this wire integrity all the way back to the computer is good. Because as you can say, I'm getting communication down those lines. And we measured that, remember with the oscilloscope and the meter. And I knew that I was getting, I was like, everything's checking out. I'm getting power ground. My CAN communication lines are good, so I knew that was was pretty positive that um, this wiring was good. I didn't have really, um, since I didn't check this side, I didn't really have a good CAN signal to verify it with, but it looked good to me. I didn't see anything crazy on it, so that's why I had um, said this well this joystick here was bad and as you can see I'm still gonna say that's bad because we just verified that our wiring integrity to the well we verified a couple things we wired verified that the wiring going to here is good because we're reading out of these left hand side wires um, it's also still reading on this joystick, still reading on the right hand side, even though I'm plugged into the left hand side. So that tells me how the computer's logic works and how it determines which side is left and right is not why, by what wiring harness you plug into, which side you plug into. It doesn't matter if you plug into the left or right, the way the computers determining which sides the left and right is through the module here so yeah all right well here's me doing what I do best being a shade tree mechanic uh, it's hot the sun's beating down on my head and um, so here's the deal I'm uh, gonna transfer this module 
uh, the, from John Deere over. I'm just on my front seat of my truck trying to get the sun is just beating, frying my brain. But, um, so what I was able to find was I wasn't able just to buy the module course. So, um, but I did, I was able to, because at first John Deere was just telling me I just need to buy a joystick, which was like three grand somewhere around there it was a lot and I said well I just need the module and uh, they said well we don't sell the module separately but I said well there's a part number on this dude so oh it's on the module side of it but on there's a part number on this and Finally, after some looking, they were able to find me this piece. So the only thing that it doesn't have on there is just the, the handle itself and this part. So, but it was cheaper. This one was around $1,500 um, instead of almost $3,000 for the other one. So. It did save the customer some money. I did try to take, I did take this module apart and I have limited success. Um, I, I dabble a little bit with trying to repair um, circuits, circuit boards and stuff like that. I took this one apart, not this actual one, this is the new one, but the one off the old one. And I looked at the circuit board. Sometimes you can find a crack or joint or something and reflow the solder or camera just randomly shut off there but sometimes you can just um i've had success with just reflowing the joints or replacing some components i tried that but i was unsuccessful um, um so unfortunately i was unsuccessful in re uh, repairing the module for the customer um so I was getting to the point where I would have had to do some deeper, um, you know, tear down or deeper um, diagnosis, trying to find out what, where the problem was in the circuit board. Long story short, I just, um, the customer needs this machine, obviously. So we um, he ordered that, the new bottom piece. So to transfer this over, I'm just taking these screws, there's three screws in this handle. I'm gonna take out and see what, what we have to do here to, um, transfer this handle over. So I guess, um, just be aware guys that if you do have a a joystick that needs replaced or failure I guess find out if it's in the the module part of it or if there's something like mechanical in here that's wrong and you can replace even if John Deere tells you you can't um, they do it is an option to replace um, separately so now I just have to figure out how to take this thing apart and uh, so that slides off of there so luckily we don't have to take anything there apart and then there's a little grommet here that looks like it pops out and then couple of zip ties here so I'll have to get some cutters and uh, so they have this little loop here so it goes around the module the bottom piece here um, and then they have it zip tied up here so I'm gonna go get some cutters clip this off and then um, swap this over to the new one um, go plug it in, make sure everything's working like it should. Um, and uh, 
I'll show you guys and we'll verify that that's going to fix fix its problems. Uh, make sure there's no more codes. Everything's good. Um, but yeah, so I'll uh, I'm going to get to putting this thing back together. All I need to do is slide this back in. Slide this one into this one. Put the zip ties on and go go plug it in. So right here, just put in two zip ties. To hold that little harness piece down. Slide the boot back over. And this guy's ready to go back in the machine. Okay, I'm in the, in the John Deere. I got the joystick set there for now. I got everything plugged in on both sides. Um, as you can see, this side's plugged in, this side's plugged in. So let's go ahead and start it up. joystick so there's our right joysticks working now bring that guy up a little bit now let's try our left joystick about forward backward left right no codes so that's a fix guys So machine's working as it should now. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off so you can hear me. Um, machine's working, no codes. Um, so what I gotta do next, which I'm not gonna do on video because I'm just putting everything back together. You guys saw me, I think, take it apart, but no reason to video that and make this video terribly long. What I'm gonna do is you can see that John Deere, put conduit up until here and then these wires are just bare and they kind of get crammed up underneath here behind this this plastic cover here well these things vibrate like crazy and if you guys remember I had to solder repair and solder this wire here um, because it had been rubbing on the side of the on the metal on the side of here and rubbed a spot through it um, Not seeing anything else So that's good, but um, did that have anything to do with the failure of this module? I don't know um, Not sure uh, Could have just been uh, I mean, it was bare copper, so it had been recently, and then the fact that that was bare copper, one of the can wires, and then that module failed. Who knows? But it doesn't really matter, um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this. I have some of this, um, what is it called? Um, Tesla or Tessa tape. It's this really uh, strong... It's not like electrical tape it's used on wiring harnesses and this it's a super strong good tape um, like I said it's not like electrical tape it's more for like wiring harnesses I'm gonna wrap all these exposed wires here with it before I put it together even just this little piece um, I'm gonna wrap all that stuff up and then uh, put this all back together and that way hopefully this will never happen again um, as far as the as far as the wires rubbing through anyways 
Um, as far as the joysticks, modules going bad, who knows. Um, this thing has 2400 hours on it and poor guy had to um, replace a $1,500 module, lucky, <coughs> or what could have been potentially $3,000 module because his uh, John Deere $60,000, $70,000 skid steer, whatever it cost, I have no idea what he bought it used for, but whatever it cost was just a giant lawn ornament because of a module so um and i understand the customer was um a little bit frustrated i'd be frustrated too if my skid steer um was down because of a module you think these things would be everything's electronics nowadays i mean i guess if you don't want to deal with it you're gonna to have to get the an old school uh foot pedal unit or something mechanical unit so one more quick rant as i'm putting this thing back together i wrapped all this stuff up with this tested tape really good strong stuff so it shouldn't rub through again uh, like i said you know john deere probably should have done something there but our job uh, is to at least in my opinion is to make things better than when you took them apart and try to prevent failures from happening again and uh so <clears throat> real good idea to do that don't be a dirt bag there is a lot of last couple of years i get parts or stuff i see stuff that it just blows my mind like people i i thought it was common or sense but people seem to lost the fact of taking pride in their work um or caring about their work and just i see the craziest things i get new parts ordered that some of the stuff the way they're put together or the, the following after other people it's just like wow come on guys take a little pride in what you do um don't be a dirt bag make things better than when you uh you know you came and did it and you know there's a problem with this rubbing against there and you know there's bare wires just wrap them up do something you know and uh to try to make it where that's not going to happen again take a little pride in your work um and that just leads me on on my way up here i was listening to a podcast and there's this youtube there's some youtubers out there guys that um I mean, they're even on podcasts. They're, these guys have millions of views. They're supposedly some diesel mechanic and they uh, work on equipment and stuff. Like, And these guys, I watch five minutes of their videos and I I know instantly as somebody that is, that's a mechanic and I don't know it all and there's guys that are a lot better than me and the day that I think I know it all is is the day when I need to take a step back and I'm learning all the time and I can admit when I'm wrong, but these guys that are going around and <clears throat> and uh, acting like they're professionals and, and I mean, they're taking advantage of people that are new to diesel mechanics or don't know what they're doing or really don't have a clue. And so they, they, they listen to these guys and they take their words as you know like they know what they're talking about and i get it they don't just don't know any better but anybody that's been doing this for a while uh, knows these guys you watch a few minutes of their videos and this guy has i'm serious he has millions of views tons of subscribers and i can tell from watching his videos just the way he goes about things and talks about things that you can tell um, when somebody's <laughs> doesn't know what they're doing but you know I don't mind the fact that he's making money off of YouTube and you know I'll never get those amount of views because nobody wants to watch um, somebody rebuild a cylinder or, or do the stuff I do I get it I'm not going for millions of views on my channel that's not why I started it but it does irritate me a little bit and I saw one youtuber who i have a ton of respect for and really like watching his stuff um this uh the guy uh, western truck and tractor repair and that's a guy that really knows what he's talking about and knows what he's doing and he was talking about how people just on youtube want to see some 19 year old kid blow up a hundred thousand dollar truck and 
and that's how you get millions of views and but um i wanted to and i totally agree with that but i also wanted to go a little further and i'm sure um i can't speak for the guy or anything like that i just really enjoy his stuff western truck and a guy that really can tell knows what he's doing and uh really knows what he's talking about and uh you can tell a guy that's been doing this and putting in the work and the research to become a better mechanic i know i'm always trying to improve and get better at what i do but then there's this guy these other guys there's a couple of them and i'm not going to mention any names because that's not what i'm definitely not who i am or what i'm about but if they just wanted to make youtube videos to make money that's fine i have nothing against that nothing wrong with that but when these guys come out and make these youtube videos and they they prey on people that don't know what they're talking about or are naive and don't understand and they these guys take their words for it and they act as like they're some kind of expert that's when it it, it kind of irritates me because i can tell i can see through them and tell that they don't know what they're doing and uh so anyways <clears throat> hopefully i can find all the looks like he's missing one of his screws great <sighs> he took this apart so anyways but um that's just a little rant i had i was coming up here and this guy was on a podcast and <sighs> you know i don't hate the guy i don't hold any bad feelings for him i don't care that he's got a million views on his channel it just bugs me when he tries to come off as an expert on things and i can tell right off the bat he's not and kind of annoys me but it is what it is like i said i'm not on this to get millions of views or clickbait or anything i'm just trying to help some people out that might um be having some problems with their machine and if i can help some people out that's fine with me but um and then another thing i i really i don't so anyways just a little bit of rant but the main thing i wanted to say was just take some pride in your work and always try to do better and uh even though john deere didn't cover this stuff up like they should have doesn't mean you don't have to, you shouldn't or you can't you know so anyways i gotta go dig for screws or